Hi everyone, it's Dr. LeBlanc with Unit 6E, Regulation of Eukaryotic Gene Expression, Translational Regulation by RNA Interference. Our learning goals are to understand the widespread nature of translational regulation by RNAi, to understand the experiments that led up to the discovery of RNAi, Mechanism of Gene Regulation to understand the details of the mechanism of RNAi, and to understand the difference between microRNAs, siRNA molecules, and the RNAi pathway, to understand how RNAi can be used in therapies to silence gene products. So, evidence for the messenger RNA degradation via double-stranded RNA came from studies in C. elegans, which is a tiny um, a nematode worm that is a model system for genetics and developmental biology uh, from the laboratories of Andrew Fryer and Clay Craig Mello. The goal of their experiments was to understand how gene silencing was caused by injection of RNA. So here's their experiments. They thought that if they injected a, uh, an RNA that was complementary antisense to the messenger RNA and blocked the start site of translation that they could block the production of a particular protein. Okay? So uh, they injected these antisense RNAs into worms and essentially found little effect, no effect at all. Um, their control also showed no effect. But their other control, where they injected both the antisense and the sense RNAs together at the same time, had a profound effect and produced a worm that had the same phenotype as if you knocked out the gene uh, from the genome. Remember, now we are just trying to block translation, try to block the production of the protein product. But when they injected this double-stranded RNA, they got a phenotype that matched knocking out the gene itself. Hmm. When they looked inside the embryos, they found that in the uninjected controls, they had plenty of RNA. Here it is stained. It's called MEX3 RNA. It's stained in black. When they injected the antisense RNA, they got some diminution in the amount of RNA. It reduced the content to some extent. But when they injected the double-stranded RNA, it completely eliminated the target messenger RNA. So they knew they were on to something, and probably something important. Here's a bigger picture of the data. That's the control. That was uh, just the antisense RNA. But when they injected the double-stranded RNA, they induced this RNAi cascade um, uh, and all of that messenger RNA was in degraded. So let's look at um, animal genomes. Animal genomes actually encode many different microRNAs. They are transcribed into these short transcripts. Okay, they are not messenger RNAs. Their sole function is to, as a regulatory mechanism. In the nucleus, they're processed by drosha. Okay, they have this double-stranded region, which means that they're complementary here. This goes out into the cytoplasm, which is taken up by an enzyme complex called dicer. Dicer then trims this, and a helicase from the risk complex separates these two into mature microRNAs. These are also called siRNAs at this point small interfering RNAs when they are separated from each other. So microRNAs can cause RNAi interference. The RNA interference is the mechanism and microRNAs are the molecules. They're encoded by genes. So far there's about 3,500 different microRNAs identified in humans. So this is not a minor player here. This is a major um, mechanism for regulating gene expression. <clears throat> if you look at some microRNAs that are involved in common human diseases, uh, we have microRNAs that are involved in breast cancer, lung cancer, gastric cancer, liver cancer. They're involved in the susceptibility to HIV and to influenza. Um, if you have multiple sclerosis or a host of other autoimmune disease, there are microRNAs that are involved in those as well, Parkinson's disease. So they're quite important for human health. 
Okay, let's take a closer look at what goes on in the cytoplasm here. Here are the steps in RNAi. The microRNA is transcribed in the nucleus and trimmed a little bit and then go, goes into the cytoplasm where it's picked up by the dicer complex. Processes the RNA into 21 nucleotide double-stranded pieces. So here it is. This is double-stranded, 21 nucleotides long. Then the strands separate. Uh, a helicase accomplishes that. And one strand, the siRNA, this is the siRNA now when it's single-stranded, is used by the RNA-induced silencing complex, or called RISC. RISC binds, helps this siRNA bind to uh, messenger RNAs by complementary base pairing. So this is anti-sense, and our messenger RNA is going to be the sense strand. Once this happens, once these two RNAs bind, then um, the risk complex silences the messenger RNA, usually by um, degra degradation. Usually the entire uh, messenger RNA is just degra degraded. Sometimes it can be, um, tran uh, the translation can be blocked. So most often it's degradation of the target. That's what Andrew Miller and Craig, uh, Andrew Fire and Craig Mello found, they found degradation of the target messenger RNA, but sometimes you can also get blocking the start site of translation. So again, um, into the nucleus, you get your pre-microRNA. Uh, um, that's been processed by Drasha after it's been transcribed from your uh, DNA, from the uh, gene. And then in the cytoplasm, it is um, processed by Dicer. And um, binds to the risk complex. And the risk complex then silences the messenger RNA uh, by degraded, if it's degraded. OK, RNA interference mechanisms are widespread. We just saw that and have many possibilities as targets for explo exploitation by biotech and pharma. <clears throat> um, here's some more um, microRNAs and their involvement in different disease states. OK, so um, they're involved in many, many uh, processes. One target for uh, therapy uh, that biotech has uh, identified is the disease hypercholesterolemia. Um, you have excess cholesterol that forms lots of plaques in your blood vessel walls and uh, leads to atherosclerosis, uh, which is not good. Um, so if you could block the enzymes that make your cholesterol, you could reduce the amount of cholesterol in your bloodstream. Alnylam, which is a Boston-based biotech company, is, has some um, RNAi therapy in the pipeline for hypercholesterolemia. And you can uh, look more at the steps uh, involved in getting this to um, market. Here's another Alnylam page. So in summary, the mechanisms of RNA silencing by RNAi are widespread. RNAi is the mechanism by which cytoplasmic messenger RNAs are either blocked at the level of translation or, more often, degraded by the risk complex. The RNAi mechanism was discovered in C. elegans by Fire and Mello when they tried to block translation by injecting antisense RNAs into the cytoplasm of the nematode worm. More surprising was when they injected a control of both the sense and antisense complementary RNAs. They completely destroyed all of the cellular copies of the gene's messenger RNA. MicroRNAs are encoded in the nucleus and transcribed at different points in development and in different tissues. There are at least 3,500 different mi microRNAs in a human. MicroRNA precursors are cleaved and processed in the cytoplasm by the enzyme complex di dicer. Small RNAs that are produced by uh, the action of Dicer then come apart and are picked up by the risk complex, which separates the two small RNAs. One, is comp one that is complementary to the messenger RNA 
binds to the mRNA. The risk complex then degrades the messenger RNA, silencing the gene. RNAi has been implicated in, the reg in regulating gene expression in many tissues of the human body, and biotech companies have RNA products in the pipeline as potential therapies for diseases such as hypercholesterolemia.